Ciao everyone, welcome to Beatspot, I'm Marco and in this video I want to show you how to make space for a vocal in a mix with a, a very nice plugin which is a Track Spacer by Waves Factory, so let's dive into it. Track Spacer creates space in a mix by curving the frequencies that a track needs. It applies an inverse EQ curve after analyzing the sidechain signal. Now you can get cleaner mixes with the turn of knob. Technical things. Track Spacer features an internal 32 band EQ that reacts to the incoming sidechain signal. It analyzes the spectrum of the sidechain and applies a reverse EQ curve to another track. Now we look at a mixing session that uh, I recently made and that's a, a punk rock uh, mix and basically there were three main elements the drums, the guitar and the vocal so, so while there wasn't uh, any problem with the drums uh, interacting with the vocal or the guitars there were the guitars and the vocals that were overlapping and the vocals most of the time ended up uh, being drowned. So I decided to use track spacer to just carve some space for the vocal without killing the whole guitar, which had uh, a very rich uh, frequency spectrum. And that's because uh, a simple sidechain, a single band sidechain, will have uh, attenuated, will have uh, turned down all the frequency spectrum of the guitar in response to the vocal and that uh, would have made the mix poorer in terms of uh, frequency richness in terms of spectrum because all the frequencies brought in by the guitar would have attenuated and the vocals which had uh, very fewer frequencies uh, aren't enough uh, to fill the whole spectrum. So now let's dive into it. So I'll play this portion of the track. So on the group of the guitar, I used uh, several track spacer to just have a tailored sidechain so let's see how i used it so first uh, there is this one which is a very light one and then there are these ones so these uh, track spacers have been set uh, in response uh, to a specific part of the vocal because if we if we give a look uh, we have uh, the lead vocal then we have the overlaps uh, then we have uh, the vox and we also have uh, this uh, intro channel so i made one for the lead vocal which is for the uh, breakdown and then i made uh, an intro vocal which is just for the intro because uh, the vocal kicks in uh, very hard and then bvox which is uh, the chorus basically so the first vocal the lead <laughs> So as you can see, the track spacer isn't reacting to all the vocals, only the one on the lead channel. And I also automated the ratio because uh, I wanted to make uh, some moments where the vocal was more prominent and other moments where they were just at the same level. So just to create some dynamics in the arrangement. Then there's the intro. <laughs> And that's it then we have the bvox so the bvox are this one so <laughs> okay and then we have this other group of things which is the overall box and this is very very light so uh... 
So as you can see, these are very, very light. And I used so many track spacers because uh, I wanted to have a variation in the arrangement and I wanted to be accurate and not invasive at all. So what does it mean being invasive with this one? So I have a previous version of the mix where I've definitely been invasive and I destroyed the mix just by turning the knob too much. So let's give it a listen. So this is the final mix. Oh. As you can see, I completely drowned the guitars uh, below the vocals and uh, it almost acted like uh, a filter, a sweeping filter. And that's the problem with this plugin. So if you overdo it, you just uh, completely destroy the tonal balance of uh, each sound and they can behave uh, in a weird way. Also because uh, it's dynamic, so it moves uh, and it feels weird. Um, and the main problem of the previous version was using many versions of, uh, was using many instances of uh, track spacer with a, a very high ratio. And that made the cut even more evident and sweeping depending on uh, how the vocal moved. So. How can we set it up? Let's give it a look. Every track spacer has this uh, GUI and we have the amount, which is uh, the amount. So that's the amount. And then we have the low cut and the high cut. So this is the low cut and the high cut uh, of the input signal. So if I turn down the low oh, cut, we basically have a wider band being uh, sidechained because uh, the track spacer is uh, responding to a wider frequency range of the vocal. If we click on this dot, uh, we have other parameters such as the pan, the left and right uh, uh, monitoring or the mid side monitoring. And then we have the attack and release. So if we want to select the sidechain signal in Ableton 10, it's very easy. You just have uh, this space with the sidechain drop down menu and you select the input signal you want. So this is great and it's uh, unique. And other ways you can do a similar thing are by using a multiband compressor with the sidechain, but uh, that affects the whole uh, frequency band in the same way. So you can just create uh, several multiband compressors uh, responding uh, each one to the same uh, frequency range. So it's up to you. You can also automate uh, an EQ, but to be honest, uh, there's nothing like Traspacer as far as I know, and that's like uh, an instant solution. So I highly recommend it. And also you can use it on whatever instruments. So if you have a kick drum and an 808, you can use it to make the same thing, to make the kick cut through the 808 or whatever. You can make a bell with very few harmonics cut through a bunch of pads uh, or to make a horn stab or violin stab cut through a melody, a group of melodic instruments, whatever. So it's very versatile. In this video, I wanted to show you how to use it for vocals because I believe it's the main reason this plugin has been made. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below and see you in the next one.